Yo, 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 what is going on, everybody? Happy New Year's. It's been a while since we did a space. Uh, we're going to give a few minutes for a few more people to uh, join the call. And then I have an awesome episode planned with uh, Mauricio. Uh, today's space is not going to be focused on crypto. It'll be more focused on self-development, personal growth. We're going to be basically sharing tips and tricks that we have both used to uh, change our mindsets and uh, our life. Uh, so I'll let Mauricio hop in when he's ready, but... Uh, I think this is going to be a great way to uh, start 2023. Uh, I've kind of gone through a lot of realizations myself. That there's so much more to life than just crypto. Crypto, just one little aspect of uh, there's so much more. So what's up, Mauricio? Welcome to the space. What up, Zen? How's it going? It's been it's been a long time. How How is everyone doing? Happy New Year's, first of all. I hope everyone had a good little break over the christmas break and, and new year's um and i'm really excited to be here it's been it's been so long since i've been in a in a space with with the with a zen lounge solo nation you know it's been it's been too long dude we had some amazing times vegas was amazing and uh i had no idea that you were so into personal development because that's kind of like one of my things that i'm really into and I've always known that we had a lot in common, but I didn't know that you also had a whole self-development journey as well. Uh, I talk about it sometimes, but not as much as I should. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had some realizations too. And over, you know, like New Year's, you know, everybody like kind of rethinks their 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 goals, where where, where they want to be at. And, and um, I just, I, I had been focusing a lot in crypto and work and you kind of sometimes forget to like take a step back and be like grateful for what, for how far you've come, the things you've accomplished and, and kind of um, just get lost in, in like the hustle and the bustle of things. And, and sometimes you get too into certain things and you don't take the time to really reflect and, and kind of, uh, you know, make, make the most out of life. You know, it's not all about money. It's not all about, crypto it's not all about like pumping the shit to the moon you know so so yeah this is what, what this space is going to be about it's going to be more um yeah I, I think i never really shared my story but i mean my life really changed in like a matter of like two years um so i guess we can start with like telling a bit of yeah the tips and tricks that i used um to kind of uh t- turn turn things around i mean about I mean, I, I'm I'm not much yet. Like I'm, I'm like I, I haven't really accomplished too much, but I'm a lot further along than I have I was two years ago. And um, like I recently accomplished one of my like goals that I was like thinking about for years, where I would just be able to kind of work from from anywhere in the world from a laptop and and not really need to um, to have that personal freedom, you know, to just live wherever you want and and be able to like kind of make your own schedule and do that and that's been one of my biggest accomplishments and as I reached it I never really took the time to appreciate it and and be grateful for it I was just more or less hustling like like we mentioned and and just moving forward at all times and and just yeah so so recently I've had the time to reflect and and yeah I I I am into self-development I I really um had that change I kind of like had a had an awakening a couple years ago and it just shifted everything in my life really quickly. And I just feel like this community, um, you know, the Zen Lounge, Solo Nation, it's, it's a bunch of like, like-minded like people. And I thought it would be great to kind of maybe bring ourselves together, not just as like crypto enthusiasts and stuff, but also as like a, a community of like-minded people and like build our own support system to achieve our goals and kind of... Uh, push forward and make make 2023 our best year yet and yeah so this space you're anyone's welcome to come kind of come up and um request to speak and stuff it's not like we're not trying to be me and zen here like some sort of like coaches or anything like that's not at all what we're, we're going for like we it's more or less like a support system and um yeah what, what do you think zen yeah so this is going to be the start of a new monthly series uh Everyone could use it for whatever purpose they want, but we're definitely don't want to be your guru. If you want a guru, go sign up for Tony Robbins or go to one of his trainings. But we're just trying to share our stories. And if whatever we could share helps somebody, then that's what we accomplished our job, right? And you have done a lot 
and I've done a lot and, you know, we can kind of share what has helped us get to where we are now, but I totally agree. We have so much, uh, both of us have so much more we want to, um, do and so much more we want to achieve, but same thing with you. Uh, a lot of times when we achieve these huge goals, like it's always like, what's next, what's next. We don't really like sit back and celebrate our goals. Right. And that's going to be one of the points of this space is, In this call, we're going to go over a blueprint, some steps to, you know, enhance your life. So you get on a positive, create positive momentum in your life. But we also want to open up the floor for people to come up here and say, hey, this is my new year goal. Uh, This is what I want to achieve. Or this is, I also want to be like, maybe some of I also want to be like Mauricio. And then maybe three months down the road, they could come back. We want to do these monthly, the first Monday of every month. Three months down the road, they could come back and be like, Zen. Uh, Zen Lounge, everybody that's listening, I just got my Ferrari that I told you guys I was going to get. And then, like, not only will that feel good that you have a support group that you can kind of, like, share your wins with, also, you're going to inspire the hell out of the new people that are listening. They're going to be like, damn, that guy, uh, spiritual, just got himself his dream car. If he could do it listening to these spaces and being in this environment, this frequency, then I can do it too. So that's, like, another purpose of this whole thing. But uh, spiritual did you have anything to say if not we'll move into uh, the blueprint to having the best year of 2000 the best year of your life and we kind of just uh, me and marisa we just put this together like in the last 48 hours uh, it's kind of just all been spontaneous and organic so uh, we're definitely open to hear what you guys think and if you guys like the idea as well but um marisa or spiritual you guys want to hop in Yeah, well, I guess I could quickly just recap the the change, the the drastic change that happened in the last like two to three years of my life. Um, so I was basically living in Australia right before COVID, and I was I was I was a chef. Like at first, I was when I was young, I just knew I wanted to travel, knew I wanted to see as much of the world as I could, get as many new experiences. And at at, at a young age, I didn't want to go to school. You know, I was like fuck school like it's just a system like they're not teaching me things I want to learn like I just I was always against the system I didn't really I was never good at school like I could do it if I really tried but I was never like gifted right I had to like really put in the effort it w- wasn't something I wanted to do so when I was young I was like fuck it I want to travel I want to see the world and then I'll, I'll, I'll kind of figure my, my 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 shit out as I go um, and that worked I mean I, I traveled for a long time as a chef for about four years and then I was in Australia right before COVID hit, and um, I was having like this feeling of like, okay, this is not the this, this, this chef life is not sustainable. It's not something I want to do forever. Um, so I, I was looking into enrolling into school, and then as soon as I was enrolling into into university, um, like COVID hit, and then lockdown started. So I was already kind of enrolled, and then I was able to really just focus on that during lockdowns in Australia. I really quickly um i also had like an awakening during that same time i just became really spiritual started reading books on this started the wim hof method started just um just changing my mindset i i started to realize that i kind of like i wasn't the cause i was the effect you know like uh we i was causing i was basically creating my own reality and when when i realized that that i was creating my own reality through my thoughts through my attitudes through through the persistence through the things i do every day that thing that just really changed my life. I just started having this desire and I was really into crypto at the same time. And I just studied really hard for about a year, year and a half. I finished that as I really dove into crypto. Um, and then I came to Canada. And then when I came to Canada, uh, Bob Ratz gave me a chance, you know, and then that's, that's, that's the story. Basically within those two years, everything just shifted. I, I started as, um, business development, not even head of business development, just like starting out. But uh, I just always had this, like, confidence. I, I really just kept pushing, kept grinding. And I just had this, like, will. I just I just knew it was going to work out. And I, we're going to go through the steps now that, that I kind of used to kind of yeah, uh, so accomplish it, these things. It looks like you brought up one of the key points. Uh, was one of the biggest moments of your life when you changed from the effect equation of life to being a cause? One of the first things that we wrote down. Yeah, exactly. Maybe we can head. Can you break that? D- can you break down like what that means? Um, 
being at the cause and not the effect of life? Yeah, I mean, we're basically trained like we the first step is to get out of this victim mentality that you have and that we're being tricked into because we we are the cause, not the effect. Like where our focus goes, energy flows. Uh, we're being trained to feel suppressed and encouraged to be a victim, you know, like we, we can't fall for it. And I, I was part, I wasn't really conscious about it. Like, it's not that I was negative or it's not that I felt like a victim, but I wasn't really doing anything to, I wasn't really aware that I was creating my own reality. Right. And as soon as, I had that awakening and that made sense. Then things just started working out. You know, it, it doesn't matter your gender, your race, your color, your vaccination status like that. that That's all irrelevant. Like you can't focus on, on stuff that's dividing you from other people and, and kind of spend your time complaining or, or basically setting yourself up as a, as a victim. Um, like you, you're really in charge. And I guess like people just don't want you to know, like the, it's it's better for governments and authorities to have you control than just think that you are a victim to your surroundings rather than you knowing that you can really kind of do whatever you want. Um, yeah, you want to keep touch on that, Zen? What about those with wisdom before us? Um, yeah, I, I could t- touch on this. Um... A lot of the programming is always basically to make people feel um, less than. They don't want people to feel empowered because, you know, that's the uh, force that's going to cause all the great things that happen, right? So uh, there's a famous saying, especially like everyone always wants to find uh, an excuse or someone to blame. And um, it's like everyone wants to point the finger. It's like the saying, like, you could point the finger at someone else, but you really got four fingers pointing back at yourself. So the moment that you take full responsibility um, and you, you t- get rid of all the, your excuses and all the stories, storylines that you're telling yourself, uh, then it's just, you know, you get rid of all, like, that's all this, just all, like, imaginary stuff that you're telling yourself of why you can't achieve what you want to achieve, right? So um, that's really the biggest in our culture is like it's celebrated to be a victim nowadays right and uh there could be fathers there could be good reasons for that right but overall um the hidden agenda behind the mainstream is always like there's a reason for it right and uh when people are victims they're they're not in their power and you know no great things could come from that point in my opinion Yeah, I and that going into the next that goes into the next thing. Like, if you li- if you read any self help book from Napoleon Hill to anybody, like the first thing they tell you is you have to take responsibility. You can't blame your mom. You can't blame the city you're raised in. You can't blame these things. Uh, that's all part of the victimhood, right? So you have to take responsibility for everything, and so much responsibility, even your thoughts. And when you take responsibility for your thoughts, you know that's going to be um, nurturing, basically better habits, everything possible. So your thoughts are things. So uh, that's basically the first thing I think people could really take responsibility is instead of thinking those negative thoughts every morning, you know, try to replace it with a few uh, healthy thoughts. And that's the beginning because when you have healthy thoughts, all of a sudden you're going to have healthier actions, health, healthier daily routines, whatever. But uh, I think taking responsibilities for actions is another big one too. Yeah, I think I think your thoughts is, is, is really the basis of, of it all. Like um, if you and I think meditation really helps with this. If you can slow down your mind and take 10 minutes before bed, 15 minutes before bed and maybe the same when you wake up, you can kind of like reset your mood for the day. And and you just that that, that self-talk is, is kind of like in a way and and it, it all it's all connected you know like if you're telling yourself like hey i'm the shit i can accomplish anything like uh i i'm i'm i can do anything i set my mind to and then you work hard at it then then it's gonna happen like that's just how how the universe kind of works so that self-thought it, it, it takes time you know like you can't just shift it from one day to another it's like a process and it's like growth everyday growth but um yeah, so what that is doing is it's actually programming your subconscious mind. So if we were to imagine like your computer is like a small little memory card and then 
it can only your 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 conscious mind can only hold so much data at once where your subconscious mind is like the infinite driver that has all your memories everything your beliefs all stored in it and uh that's kind of what happens like a lot of people have trained themselves so much that they'll look in the mirror and the first thing that pops up is like oh i'm lazy i'm this i'm all this negative stuff and if that's where you are right now that's perfect cuz we're we were on a brand new year and you could start with fresh new habits and at first you know you have to kind of trick yourself you know you have to push down the negative things that pop up and just start replacing it with oh i'm beautiful i'm this i'm confident and it might seem kind of superficial and fake at first but then eventually you do it enough it becomes more and more real it becomes part of your programming and then when you walk up to the mirror automatically there's like a subconscious response like Boom. Oh, I feel good. I look good. I like the person I'm seeing in the mirror. Is that good? In Napoleon Hill, he calls it auto suggestion, but they've been talking about this in like all the books from like anyone you read, they talk about this programming yourself. Exactly. Exactly. There's, there's so many, we have some book suggestions later at the end that we could, we could tell, but there's rich dad, poor dad, like Robert Kiyosaki, David Hawkins. Um, there's, there's just so many, they're all kind of the same. And it's 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 all like there's different authors and there's different books but it all kind of comes down to the same basic like rules or laws of the universe and if you can kind of understand them and and, and learn to somewhat navigate them like you're not going to do it overnight and not like everyone i'm still learning i'm learning every day I'm, I'm getting better at it every day i learn different meditations i do different things but it, it's it you, you get better at it and then you're mind you're way more conscious about everything that you're doing and the thoughts you're having and the situations that you're getting into and then you can learn to kind of react at a I'm a lot more chill since I've started meditating and, and kind of being conscious of my thoughts because I know if I'm getting into like an altercation or I'm having a very neg like you know if I'm getting frustrated then it's just really affecting me negatively it's not really I'm letting Pe the pe person or, or the situation beat me really if I get upset and if I don't control my emotions. So yeah, it's all kind of like work in progress. So I guess the, to recap that step number one is like get out of that victim mentality. Like you are creating your reality where your focus goes, energy flows. And secondly, that, that your thoughts in your mind, like just really be conscious about what you're thinking and, and try to really change it to positive, um, affirmations rather than complaining or negative or or looking down or like talking bad about yourself if you're doing that then then it's just gonna basically attract negative results so the more positive you are about yourself and about your situation the the, the better chances that things are going to start to to change and things are going to start to go your way Gage, and, par and part of say? and part of that is getting into a better environment so you may not have anybody positive in your life right now but that's exactly why you could come to these monthly meetups and get filled with a bunch of positivity um your environment is a big part of it too i want to yeah, gauge I, I invited gauge up he did some awesome humanitarian work in mexico i wanted him to share that uh, i don't know if it's time yet but we'll we'll have him speak amazing yeah anyone that wants to come up like we'll just go through these steps that we that we, we that i've been using and, and then use this throughout his life and if you guys want to share your thoughts or opinions or, or, or things you use, like just come up. I know Lainey is all into spirituality and all this stuff. And I know most of the Zen lounges. So if anyone wants to come up, just request the mic and come up. Yeah. So up next, we're going to talk about step number two. Uh, so once you take responsibility and you're at cause for your life and you have, you know, positive mindset, uh, you're then in a, positive place to basically write down a game plan uh it's hard to write down a game plan if you have all these excuses right so after you got rid of all your excuses and the bs story that you're telling yourself you then write down a game plan with no limitations you know i always tell the zen lounge members all the time like cool crypto is cool but what's your why like what is your purpose for you know wanting to even improve in the beginning like why are you in crypto like what's the end goal in the end crypto is just digital numbers on a screen until it actually you know i call it a vehicle to actually help us get to real world things so what are those real world things that you want to have happen like what's your why what is your purpose uh and 
match with that purpose, do you have a burning desire that helps you actually live full throttle to make up your why? I actually heard a recent survey that said 19 out of 20 people when they were surveyed had no idea why they woke up in the morning. So if you ask me, or if, I'm sure if I ask Mauricio, like why he wakes up in the morning, I could tell you right now, like I have a lot of goals that I have to achieve and they're so important to me. And I don't even think I could achieve them all in this lifetime. And that's why I'm always motivated and excited to wake up each day. So part of what's going to help you guys is this is also from the Napoleon Hill is creating a definite purpose. And this could basically be evolving as your life evolves. It doesn't have to be rigged. You could adjust. I'm actually adjusting my purpose uh, while I'm having this call with you guys. So a definite person, according to, a definite purpose, according to Napoleon Hill, is something that you must create for yourself. No one else will create it for you, and it will not create itself. So what are you going to do about it, and when, and how? When it comes to selecting your definite chief aim, just keep in mind the fact that you cannot aim too high. So the bigger you aim your definite purpose, the more excited you're going to be to go out there and achieve it. So this is really the starting point of all achievement. It's it's actually a desire. So match with your definite purpose and desire. This is going to – you keep this constantly in your mind. Uh, remember this. If you have weak desire, it's going to bring weak results just as small fire makes small amount of heat. Without desire, there is no fire. The fire within can only come out when you really want something. So you got to really want something in your timeline. I talk about the timeline. So you have to literally see your future timeline filled with so much amazing things that it creates a fire and that you basically desire it so much. You'll do anything to create this and make this a reality. You know, we call this the golden timeline. Uh, so this is a really important quality that people uh, have to possess the win and uh, combining the definite purpose and the knowledge of exactly what one wants and, and burning desire, you could basically possess anything that you put your mind to, in, in my honest belief. So uh, that's my step two. What do you think about that, Mauricio? Yeah, I, I agree. Like be beforehand, I was just like kind of moving on life on like autopilot. You know, I didn't really have a set concrete plan um, that I wrote down and that I was chasing. I was trying to get to. Um, and things really change once you once you really write it down, make a game plan, and then. And then I think it comes down to faith after that, you know, after you wrote faith down exactly what you want. Yeah. And then and then you need to really just believe like it's going to happen. I, I, and that that just came to me. I don't know why but I just knew things were going to happen. Like I was in school, like learning. I was learning about crypto. I just came on off a chef. I'm like, I know someone's going to give me a job and give me the one break that I need for this to like kind of turn, you know, and uh, like it did. Like Bob well, gave me the chance. That's the power yeah. of visualization and your imagination, I think. Exactly. But I just I just knew, man. That I think that was the distinguishing factor between like it happening and it not happening. Like and now I have other goals. Like your goals change, right? Like even if you write down a goal right now, maybe in a year you would have already maybe in six months you would have changed it because you would have achieved it and then surpassed it and then now your goals, you start reaching higher every time. You start aiming higher. And, yeah, I mean, like, my goals just started, like, coming true, like, and, and changing, evolving. Like, I had different goals, but, like, obviously, you plan for certain things, and then reality also comes into play. Like, it's, like, there's lessons you need to learn. There's things that you need to go through. There's, there's like, hardships you need to pass. It's, it's still life. But as long as you maintain that faith and you have that goal and that game plan and you really visualize it and, and have like this deep burning desire, then, then it's basically you're just vibrating at the frequency of that of that future. And it's, it's kind of inedible. It, it'll, it's just going to happen. There's actually the, the steps here. I wrote them down. So in the book, uh, Napoleon Hill think and grow rich uh basically this is just one example of what you could do this was for an amount of money for example fix in your mind the exact amount of money or thing you desire so you would write that down like i want i don't know let's make an example i want ten thousand dollars by whatever or i want like like you said i want a lamborghini and then step two what will you give in return like what are you willing to sacrifice what work are you putting willing to put in 
what are you willing to kind of um, part ways with to, to get that? Maybe you can, I don't know, work another day or um, stop drinking. I don't know. That, that's up to you. That depends on, the, on your goal. But that's the second one. So find the exact thing that you want. What will you give in return? Establish a definite like date where you want this to happen. I want this car. I want this money by the end of 2024. Then create a plan for carrying out your desire. So if I want this, this car, how am I going get, to get, get this car? And then that's when you got to get creative. Like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start a business. I'm going to, that, that's, it's all up to you. But uh, you just have to make that plan. And making that plan is like one of the most important steps because usually like things aren't just going to happen to you if you don't know how they're going to happen, you know? Um, the plan, having a game plan is really important. Once you have a plan, you have to write out a clear, concise statement. The exact, like, go into detail about the car. Like, I want this car to be red. I want this kind of rims. I want this. So then you can really visualize it. Once you can really, like, see it, you you got to be able to see it in your head and, like, just know that it's going gonna, it's, it's gonna to come and have a basically clear path to to accumulate it or to get that item and then you just write that stuff down and with your meditations you visualize it in the morning and at night and you just have to act like you already have it and if you just follow the game plan every day look at that uh piece of paper that you wrote look at that board that you wrote visualize it feel as though you already have it and just keep repeating yourself and then that car should be so detailed that you should know everything that it looks like like you, sh- you can even get get a picture from the internet print it put it there next to your wall and then that's that's basically it you can do that with anything you can take it to the next level even go test drive it exactly exactly or play a video game with it the more the more you put it into your mind and like drive it into your brain that it's gonna be yours and then the, the the more you can visualize it and like feel it like make it more tangible then the more likely it's going to kind of come into your life 100 percent. yeah I, i'm a big believer i've done a lot of manifestations using these steps uh what's most important that you mentioned is you know adding action in the plan because obviously this stuff isn't just going to magically appear on our driveway, right? Like you actually have to create a plan. And uh, if you look inside the word law of attraction, you'll see action is there clear as day. And the more action you put towards your goals, the more energy you're going to give it and the more likelihood it's going to be easier to uh, manifest. So the action part is very huge and uh, the belief, the faith. And most importantly, so many people have all these ideas just up in their head. And that's like the metaphysical realm. What a lot of people don't understand is when you're writing down these goals on a physical piece of paper, you're kind of taking these metaphysical ideas and putting them down onto this physical plane. And it's actually easier to manifest that way. So, so many people skip the writing down part, which is very crucial. Yeah. And by visualizing it and and repeatedly looking at it and and kind of setting that goal clear as day, you're great like basically putting into your subconscious and and you're just basically vibrating at that same frequency of that of that item of that thing that you want to accomplish this is kind of what happened with me with the validator situation like when i seen corium around this time last year published hey they're going to be validator opportunities and i had no idea anything to do with setting a validator but i just set a goal that i was going to be one I made a tweet about it, so I was accountable to the whole world that I had to follow through with this action. I wrote it down myself. I created a plan. I had to save up all this money, and it was just an idea in my head this time last year. And now, yesterday, like last week, I drove and dropped off all the equipment, and it's all getting set up. So I use this practice all the time. And that's uh, crazy, think- dude! C- congrats, man. That, that's that's awesome. I just had to replay this, having this conversation made me realize that I went through this whole process with, I had no idea how to get all the money to buy all this equipment. It was very expensive, but I just took a leap of faith and, you know, spoke it into existence, I guess. That's another thing, like speak what you want into this reality. Like your words have power. 
So make sure that you're very careful about what you're speaking into this reality. I meet people all the time that they have to remind me all the time how they're broke and they have all these issues. This is, it's like, well, that's probably one of the biggest problems that you always got to complain. Right. So I always try to practice like speaking what I want into reality. And that's part of this whole thing too. And it's hard because society is kind of getting us to, be like that, right? They, 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 they want us to be complaining. They want us to complain because we're a female or because uh, I'm your, your different color skin. Because like, I, I could be complaining because I'm Latin, you know, I'm Mexican, I'm never going to get a good job. I'm not, they, they want you to fall into that trap. It's kind of the system set up for you to kind of think that way. And if you break out of that, it's you're already like one step ahead of like 90% of, um, of people. Uh, let's, yeah. let's, let's invite some people up so who just set a goal that they want to achieve who wants to be accountable like i was accountable when i posted on twitter saying yo i want to be a validator bob and i'm gonna do whatever it takes to be one i don't care if it makes look true. stupid so who wants to come up on stage right now and be like yo this that's, is gonna be that's... my goal for 2023 i'm putting myself on a pedestal and now i'm accountable to all you it. guys i have exactly. to do it so whoever that, wants to come true. up and say their goal let's do that right now i think that'll be a good exercise yeah, that's that's good too. I do that a lot too. Like sometimes too much. I just talk shit and I say I'm we did do that, that. We did that with Vegas party, bro. <laughs> yeah, we just made it up. I'm gonna do. We're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. You just announced it without even getting approval from Bob. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's kind of how I roll. And then I have to make it happen, you know, because I already told them that it was gonna happen. So then you just find a way. Uh, it's kind of good and bad. It's it that's you know, it's not always ideal. That for me got me into a lot of toxic situations too, but for some reason that just helps me perform when you like put your back against the walls, like you have no other choice, but to deliver, like that's a really, you gotta be like a pressure performer to deal with those situations. To make it I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Bob, Bob loves that mindset too. He, he always was like, you, you, you just fucking go and you just, yeah, he, it, it was, it's good. I'm bad. Like he liked that about me, but at the same time, he's like, man, you can kind of consult with me before, like, <laughs> just aping into everything. Right, right. Well, did anybody want to hop up and share uh, a New Year's resolution with the whole group? Or is everyone going to be shy today? Maybe this next lesson will help. Maybe this next lesson. So step number four, we talked about confidence and how confidence if you look at all the great people from athletes musicians they all have a similar trait it's confidence so i'm gonna say a quote from kanye west people always tell you to be humble when was the last time someone told you to be great and that quote hit me when i heard him say that in his documentary because it's like if there's gonna be one place on the internet where someone's gonna be cheering for you saying fuck mediocrity fuck being average go out for go and be great like try to achieve greatness be outside of the norms it's going to be this space call it's going to be the zen lounge like we want everyone to go out and be great the whole world's going to tell you you know be humble you know fit in with the crowd conform we're going to tell you to be great so what did you have to say about confidence mauricio and why that's important yeah f- fuck that fuck fuck being nah I-, I i just tell it how it is like i i wake up every morning and i tell myself like I'm the shit. Not because I think I'm the shit and I think I'm better than people, but who's going to tell me I'm the shit if I don't say it, you know? No one's going to come tell me, hey, like, you're great. Like, you're going to kill it. Like, you're going to do all the things you want to do in your life. Like, no one's going to come tell me that shit. Like, I know that. I wake up in the morning, you know, I I need to tell myself, hey, like, I'm going to smash this shit. I'm going to accomplish this stuff. I'm going to do everything that needs to get done today to be one step closer to my, my end goal, you know? And I've kind of just, I, sometimes people think I'm arrogant or people think I'm, um, it can come off like that. But if you, if you look around, like at the most successful people in the world, they all have this, like, this confidence that it's like, they have zero doubt in their mind of who they are and what they want to become. Like an example is Kanye, but another example is like Steve Jobs or like athletes like Kobe Bryant, Muhammad Ali uh cristiano ronaldo if you look at any of the greats they, they all have that same attitude and it's like they don't just come in they, they they were saying they had the attitude before they were the greatest you know you always see that like pele all these guys had that attitude they they thought they were the best um 
before they actually were the best. And that's kind of the attitude you have to have because it's, it's, it, life is hard, you know, like no one's going to come out here and tell you, you are the best. Like you got to do it for yourself. And even if it, maybe sometimes you might come off as a dick to some person, like in the main, in the whole scheme of things, would you rather come off a little arrogant or like a bit too confident and accomplish your goals or be humble and, and, and only accomplish like half of what you can really accomplish. There's another quote here um, from Nipsey Hussle. The most important thing, number one, is you got to get rid of doubt. If you got doubt in what you're doing, it's not going to work. And the way to get rid of doubt is to have a concrete plan. So basically what we've been speaking about, and it's all over these books. It's, it's basically the same, the same model, the same rules. Um, yeah. That's the biggest thing. You could read like every single self-help book, but like really what's going to help you the best is like, what are all these 30, 40 books all have in common? Like they all have secret keys that all basically are the same. Have you noticed that? Yeah, because it's just like a few fundamental rules and they all follow the rules and you can use it in different kinds of things, right? Like you can use it to attract money. You can use it to attract love. You can use it to kind of do anything. But like the fundamental rules are still always the same in, in, in the books. Um, yeah, I agree. So I want to add in something too. So another thing is a lot of – sometimes there's these – spectacular athletes that are born with this um, swag or this confidence right uh, other people don't have that situation going for them so like uh, i'm not that type of person where i'm just like a natural at things it takes me hours and hours of work so like confidence can actually come from putting in the work putting in hours uh, researching studying uh, while everyone else is out partying or you know, watching, keeping up with the Kardashians. Uh, I know that I'm going to be working on whatever it is that I'm working on. It's always something. And when I walk into a room, I know that I put more hours into my craft than anyone else there. And that's going to give me uh, confidence in a lot of situations. So if you don't have confidence, you could easily develop confidence through, you know, all different types of things. And that could even be, you know, working on your body, working out. If you're uh, in the gym every single day, eating healthy, not eating bad, you're going to have respect for yourself and you're going to develop like a a confidence in yourself too because you feel more worthy than you did back when you were lazy, right? So there's so many ways to develop confidence. Uh, It's not always just like a natural thing. You could develop it. Yeah, I think that's the last step to kind of put all this together is like practicing self-care, you know, taking care of your yourself physically and emotionally. Um, and it, it helps you to, to feel more grounded and in control, you know. Um, and this is like, exactly it, why I was kind of like wanting to get on this wave because I realized that I went so deep because, you know, there's a wheel of life, you know, the spokes of life. And, you know, there's family, finances, career uh friendships there's all these different spokes right and i was so laser focused on crypto and everything happening with it like i forgot so many other important areas of my life like uh different like health things so that's kind of like what i'm gonna get up on stage and say that i'm gonna be like working a lot of my uh, physical fitness and uh and uh basically uh, health so go so, ahead and talk what you wanted to add about that. So you're gonna have you're gonna have a six pack um ne- by next year, right? Exactly, dude. Exactly. That's the plan. So there someone's telling me there's gonna be some huge party in Fuckland, right? So I need to be able to go to Fuckland and take my shirt off and shit. <laughs> shit. Uh yeah, yeah. Ho- hopefully I'm invited. Um but yeah, that that's definitely and another thing and and like i broke my leg uh maybe like six seven months ago so that was shit and like yeah it, it like 
four months of sitting down, like, I, yeah, it was it was hard, you know. Like, it definitely affects you. I've always been uh, someone that like constantly goes to the gym and works out and does things just because I know it's it's really important to my mental health and I I feel it like. And but when I couldn't do it, you you definitely like just appreciate it so much more and like it just reaffirms how important it is to to kind of every day at least go for a walk go for a run play a sport that you like i don't know just just get out and do something in the in the in in nature you know it's important and it, sleep is another thing i don't know if you sleep like how many hours is uh you sleep a day but sleep is also really important can i give you a huge tip for sleep that helped me yeah what's that so uh there's a lot of studies that show if you sleep with your phone right next to you like you're not going to get into heavy REM sleep so like just practice if you own a home you could actually just turn your wi-fi all the way off which is best you turn the wi-fi switch off but just practice like having your phone 10 feet from the bed when you go to sleep and you'll notice you sleep so much like turn your phone off move it away from your body so many people sleep with their phone right next to their head and it disrupts the brain waves and people don't get you know heavy like deep sleep so like that's something that I know and I'm aware of and I still forget about a lot. So that's one of the one of the habits that I'm going to really uh, take seriously this year is making sure my phone is not next to my head when I'm sleeping. So I get that full night's sleep. So the next day I'm fully charged up and ready to really get after it. Shit, I always sleep right with the phone right next to me, like on my bedside table, which is basically right next to my pillow. I'll, I'll, I'll probably I'll probably try that. I'll move that. I always tell people this because so many people don't know about it. So, yeah, it's very – they did a bunch of studies in, like, Europe on this. Yeah, I had no clue, but that's good. Like, yeah, it's – you just got to be conscious about different things like that, like your thoughts, right? Like, thought being conscious of your thoughts is one thing. But then once – there's other things that you're not aware of, you know, like this. Like, then you know one more thing. Then it's another way to kind of get a little bit better every day, better sleep. Better well here's the thing better, like better. when we start really going deep into all these tips and tricks and stuff it's like there's so many things that you could do and a lot of people that just start on these personal development journeys like they get overloaded and overwhelmed with so many things and like they get burnt out so one of the things that i've done is just like pick up one new thing like one small little habit that just like gives me like a 10 percent or one percent boost and then Make that part of my routine and then add something else and add something else, you know, because there's so much that you could do. If you try to do it all at once, you'll get burnt out and, you know, go back to your old ways. Because for people that don't know that much, like a lot of people don't even know tap water isn't the best to drink, right? So like, are you getting clean water without toxins and chemicals in it that are also going to mess up your thoughts? You know, there's so much. Um, And also, uh, nutrition is so important too for for us because uh, so many people don't know that a lot of the nutrition in our food has been depleted due to the soil so like most people aren't getting magnesium and a lot of these minerals that are really needed to have our body work at its optimum levels so uh, learning about supplements and properly feeling yourself Uh, is going to be crucial when you have a burning desire. Like if you have a burning desire and a definite purpose and you want to work every single day, like be that person, I'm never not working, I'm going after my goals. Well, if you're not properly feeling your car, you're not going to make it to the destination, right? You need to constantly be making sure that you're loading up on fuel, which is your nutrition. So nutrition is something very important. And I'm not going to talk about diets because – Everyone has their own beliefs on it, but make sure you're getting all the minerals and magnesiums and uh, vitamin C's in your diet to really, you know, accomplish and make this the best year yet. That's one thing I really want to bring up. Yeah. And all the processed foods, you know, like you got to have a a balanced diet. Like, sure, you can eat McDonald's once in a while, but it can't be like an everyday thing. It can't be a, you know, you have to really balance. You have to eat everything. You have to have... um, everything you know like anything in excess is is bad uh so if you're eating too much protein it's bad if you're drinking even if you're drinking too much water it could it could even be bad like 
anything in excess is bad. So you just have to make sure you have a balanced diet and everybody's body is different, right? Like some people can eat a lot more and, 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 and still be losing weight. Other people, not so much. Uh, so it's just like, yeah, it's diet's really up to, to you finding out what, what works best for you. Um, but, but yeah, like you just got to be conscious of that too. Just like, just like your thoughts, just like everything else we've been talking about. It's just another thing that you have to kind of, you, you really have to be conscious about anything that you put into your body. Yeah, so for me, uh, I'm going to work on my casual drinking. I'm only going to drink now when I'm in good company and for a good reason. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things I put down on my goals too. I heard you brought that up. Smoking less, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Drinking, man. Drinking is a problem in Spain, man. Oh, my God. It's like you have to be drinking beer. Like everybody's got beer and wine at all times. Like it's impossible to just like go somewhere without drinking. It's ridiculous. Like I swear to God, like I I didn't, I didn't even drink that much when I was in Canada, and then I got here, and it's just like a cultural thing. It's just like beer with with lunch, beer with dinner, um, gin tonic, like every day, man. So it, it's 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 hard to 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 cut down, but yeah, I definitely need to cut down drinking too because it's it's just like it's just like um it's, it's not good like it's beer all the time it's like it's like like we were talking about nutrition and and diet it's like not good for your diet and, and anything in excess is bad smoking drinking those are actually the worst ones yeah man i'm really excited to uh, clean myself up cuz i moved to the opposite side of town which i'm like really far from anything so i get bored easily and I mix boredom with drinking which was a bad habit (laughs) so yeah there's so many things that i'm working on myself this year and a lot of it's related to health you mentioned uh meditation being huge a visualization um dude so i actually have the whole wim hof program you mentioned you have this thrown down you want to talk about that i'll add that to all the discord everyone in discord i'll share them the whole program they could use it yeah Uh, the wim hof method Wim Hof is a, 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 I've been seeing Joe true. Rogan. I've been seeing Joe Rogan do ice baths every morning too. Yeah, he's a he's a true G. That guy, the Ice Man. Uh, he it's a really cool story. If you there's actually a book as well. I read the book. Um, basically, his 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 wife committed suicide, and he didn't really know what to do with himself, and he was like entering depression, and um, he was living in Amsterdam, and he yeah he was just like really losing it he was losing um touch with everything and he's like he just started going into like the freezing cold water um in the mornings to kind of like not be so sad and not like try to go through life without being like completely depressed and he just found out that when he went and jumped into like the freezing cold water in the morning he would kind of like wake himself up and kind of forget about like um all that had happened and all his negative thoughts and all this stuff is so yeah check out his story if if you haven't already Wim Hof method is sweet but it's basically uh breath work uh combined with with cold exposure and it's it's super good like that was like the first type of meditation that I really got into and it's still something I do like almost every day so uh yeah that that helps me tons and the cold exposure like I, I live really close to the beach here in Valencia and right now it's winter I mean it's not winter like like in Canada, but it's still like the water's still cold, you know. So sometimes I just go for a dip in the morning and it, it's it's so good. And you just get like this rush of energy for the for the whole morning and you just feel so good. It's kinda like going to the gym but without going to the gym. You know that like feeling you have after you had a run, a good sweat. It's a kinda like the same adrenaline, um endorphins and stuff like that. And it's it's really good. If you guys haven't tried it check out the Wim Hof method I think I'm gonna build something for myself to do that like uh an ice bath yeah 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 that stuff is good especially for your recovery time too but I have the full program it's like a 10-week program I'll I'll link it to the discord for free for anyone that wants to uh, do the Wim Hof method Dope. Yeah, I was gonna say we we should start um like a, a little channel in in the Zen Lounge for for this stuff for like this self development and all this stuff like practices, goal setting, setting all that stuff so people can kind of share 
um, things they do and 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 uh, goals they're they're planning on 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 doing, and we can kind of you know be each other's support system. Like we're um, we're not really doing this to kind of. I don't want to be a coach, you know. I just know this community is just a bunch of like-minded people. Um, Solo Nation, Zen Lounge, like just from meeting all you in Vegas and different events and being around uh, Twitter and just listening to everything everyone has to say. It's it's kind of like you don't just find people like this all over the place, you know. Like I can, I sure I have some friends here and there, but I can't just go tell them all this stuff. Like most of them will think I'm just weird. They'll be like, you can't manifest your life, man. What are you talking about? You, you know what I mean? So I feel like we have that here and we might as well take advantage and kind of help each other out you know it's 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 kind of a bit selfish but i'm also doing it for me to help you know if i have support from you guys and you guys i can teach you guys something that works for me maybe it does work for you maybe it doesn't but if we could just share some some knowledge and overall accomplish our goals this year and 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 further in into next year then then it's a win for everyone you know Yeah, man. And uh, when everybody's taking care of themselves and everybody is living at their highest level and feel really good mentally inside and out, then we could even focus on bigger things outside of us. You know, then we could go and we've been talking a lot in the Zen Lounge about doing some humanitarian projects like seriously uh, this summer, like really not just talking about it, being about it and putting together some like once we get ourselves out of the way and we're feeling good and we're no longer depressed, like we got all our bullshit out of the way like then we can focus on helping then we can change the world then we can change the world so i can't change the world if i'm like fake smiling and inside i'm depressed and you know bitter and have all these negative emotions right like i gotta actually be congruent and feel good myself in order to really like make a serious impact on the world and that's the next step Uh, that's kind of why gage is up here he has his hand up and he was a big spot part of reigniting my inspiration for the Zen Lounge. It's like, holy shit, man. I've been so stuck in crypto world that I forgot the real message Zen Lounge is about making the world a better place. And I saw him buy 100 soccer balls during the World Cup. And he was giving them out to kids in Cancun area who really need it. And that was like, and also I have a daughter now too, and I see how much love I'm able to give her. Like how many kids are out there that aren't receiving any love, that don't have any care, that aren't paid attention to. And like our community gives a fuck. We care and and we could actually, you know, go out there and help these people if we're all mobilized and and working together. So that's kind of like the next phase after the self-help phase where I see us going. I don't know if you see that too. One hundred percent. I think Gage is. Um, do you want? Do you want to come up, Gage? Anyone else? Why is everyone so shy today? Yo, what's up, guys? Yeah, I. Uh, I appreciate the kind words. Then I'm like kind of half working remote right now, but um, I caught most of it. Um, yeah, man. I mean, it's funny. Like when you mentioned health as wealth, nothing's ever resonated me resonated with me more until this year, the day I did that uh, event in Cabo, actually, I met this lady who was a ex Marine pilot and she had a hookup with basically the barrios of Mexico. And like these kids live in houses where like tires or staircases, like it's, it was like eye opening to be honest. So I almost felt bad. Like I didn't buy enough soccer balls. And it's like one of those things this year, I want to start doing it like every three, four months if I possibly can. But Long story short, that health is wealth. That night, I actually tore my Achilles playing pickleball. It's like just so ironic. But there's a lot of that at first. Like I kind of had that victim mentality. Like how did, how the hell did this happen to me? And then there was a bunch of things I was just starting to think about. Like look where I live. Look what I've done so far. It's not my right foot, so I can still drive. Like so many other things that I can be grateful about. So yeah, I mean, it's one of those things, like you said, it's like you either have a victim or victim mentality. And yeah, it's all about perspective, right? A hundred percent, man. And it's just like one of those things where it's just like, 
it it was a weird incident that happened on a day like that but it's just like honestly i mean winners are going to expect it to be hard and losers losers are going to expect it to be easy but both winners and losers always adjust their effort regardless so i mean it's one of those things it's now like oh i just want to eat healthier than ever probably my worst nightmare is like being that fat guy on crutches because <laughs> i was in good shape beforehand so now if anything i'm eating healthier than before it's kind of cleaning me up in certain ways um but yeah man i mean that's never resonated with me more until this year so that's like my goal is just to get back to my feet be healthier than i was prior Shit, Bro, i really want to uh, get involved with you on that next soccer ball thing in uh Cabo. So let's uh, sponsor your project and let's take it to the next level. Let's get a thousand soccer balls. Fuck it. <laughs> Too many soccer balls in the streets of Cabo. A hundred percent, man. Thank you. Yeah, and sorry about your leg, bro, because I, I broke my leg just not that long ago, so I, I feel for you. It's 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 tough, but um, everything is, like we were saying, like everything happens for a reason and there's a lesson to be learned and Maybe you need to learn patience. I don't know. Every Everyone's situation is different. But I had a few lessons that I had to kind of um, endure. And, yeah, like, I, I recovered. And now I'm finally now, like, six months later, feeling like I'm back in the shape that I used to be in. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's how, how it goes, right? But as long as you like, keep your mental attitude all right and you focus on what's still going good and what's still – positive um then 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 you'll be fine and you'll be walking in no time hopefully your recovery is not too bad yeah it's not too bad man i get my stitches out actually tomorrow so i'm pretty stoked about that i can at least like start working out upper body again so there's always good news nice dude good luck with with that tomorrow mel do you have something yeah, hi everyone. Um, it's, it's great listening to you guys speak about this stuff. Um, <laughs> nice change from from crypto, you know, and to remind us all while we're here. But um, just uh, what what Gage was talking about. Um, one of the most powerful questions I I heard about um, is the question of, of of when life throws you a, a curveball. You know, the question you can ask yourself is, what does this make possible? And um, you know, I, I had that question in the back of my mind and I just, one time as I was being made redundant, you know, and I was being read the riot act and bloody, bloody, blah, blah, and, and, and all my mind could think about was what does this make possible? And, and the, the woman who was, you know, <laughs> about to escort me out the door said, do you have any questions? And I said, no, you know, the only thought going through my mind right now is, what does this make possible? And so, you know, when, when you broke your leg, guys, or, you know, your ankle, if, if in that moment, you know, you can turn that question into what does this make possible, it immediately helps your mind to start thinking about options rather than, you know, sinking into victim mode, which can be really easy to do, you know, that why is this happening to me, you know, why me, blah de blah um, if, if in that moment you can go, what does this make possible? And you can apply that to any situation. And the number of times I have applied that question to, you know, a shitty situation or a, a curveball, um, you just come up with really interesting solutions and it throws your mind in, into a different course. So what does this make possible? That, that would be one, you know, <laughs> question I would offer for you all. Um, the other, um, the other thing I've noticed, and we were talking about it in the lounge the other day, is, is use of language. And, you know, we, we discovered this sort of use of DGEN and how we're going to reframe DGEN because DGEN is not actually good if you think about what the programming behind that is. Um, so one of the other pieces of language I've sort of I've heard and seen is, is people talking about the grind, you know, keep grinding. Um, what, if, what if, you know, we reframe that? as a mantra to let it be easy. You know, we have been programmed to think that things should be hard, that we should, you know, work hard. Um, and I've got a mantra on my fridge that is let it be easy. It's a card. I've had it for ages. And and in 
telling myself every day and in fact looking at my fridge you know <laughs> every time I go to the fridge it's like let it be easy and and when when you can embrace the let it be easy it doesn't mean you you don't have to stop working but if you can reframe it as let it be easy things become easier rather than you know if you're telling yourself keep grinding keep grinding you'll attract situations that are going to feel like a grind right and (laughs) would you rather it be a grind or would you rather it be easy so it's just you know I just have found little things like that just just tiny little things and 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 having short key mantras you know on my fridge or in prominent places um so yeah that's just a couple of things that came to mind as I was listening to you guys speak so you, you need yeah. to definitely join us next week, next month. <laughs> we need you up here. Yeah. Happy to. Yeah, really, really like your mantras too. Like those are, those are really good tips as well. Everything you said, I, I completely agreed, agree with. Cool. Happy to, happy to join. I've been studying and, and into this stuff for a long time. So <laughs> You're right, Mel. Every, everything you said is 100% on point. <laughs> cool. But let oh, me well. ask you this. Can we put you on the spot right now? You're in the hot yeah. seat. Yes, go so for tell it. Tell us what it is. You're on the accountability chair. What are you going to be manifesting in 2023? Oh, I'm going to be um, losing 20 kilos. So, <laughs> and I'm starting that with a juice fest. I'm buying a juicer this weekend and I am doing a five week juice fest or juice cleanse. And then I'm going hardcore on parasites. So, I'm learning all about parasites at the moment and how. Uh, riddled we all are so yeah for me it's about um, getting getting health back on track and starting with you know a real big cleanse and then um, yeah be be kind of you know running 5k's again uh, getting back to running being able to run 5k's so yeah I've become really (laughs) um, (laughs) um, yeah unfit and and yeah so this this year it's Back to health. <laughs> I can tell you worked on this goal because you replied to me not only with the goal you want to achieve, with the plan of how you're going to do it. I'm sure you have a visualization as well. So you didn't yeah. even hesitate anything when I asked. Yeah. You you sound you sound like Napoleon Hill himself. Yeah, well, and it's so it's it's so easy to let you you know that's the thing. I um yeah, it's it's all about setting intentions and as as you were talking about, you know, and as Napoleon Hill was talking about, but um for me last probably the last two or three years have been a real um drift. I've I've noticed that I've let myself drift and last year in particular was probably the biggest year of the drift and, and I I really let life kind of just just drift with and it was rudderless and um, you know, and I could blame the weirdness of the world and all of that. And, and then this year I thought, no, nah, I do not want to look back on 2023 and say, uh, just let another year drift by. Um, I mean, I did a lot last year, but, but in hindsight, it was epic drift and I don't want that again. So I got my, my theme word for this year is intention and intentionality. <laughs> so everything I do this year is going to be laden with intention, including the intention to, you know, really understand health and next level health. And, and, you know, I, I know that the weight loss will come from that um, as, as a byproduct, you know? So yeah, I'm very intentional about this year. <laughs> that That's amazing. I, I, something tells me that 2023 is going to be your year to turn it all around. So uh, I'm glad you came up here and hopefully you can be part of this uh, support group that we're starting support system and you can join their, their channel that we're going to have in the zen lounge and we can kind of go over our goals and and keep doing this and maybe we should have one of these calls once a month and kind of check up on how you're going how you're progressing and then we could all kind of just help each other out you know i think that's the plan i think if we do this i think this is gonna really grow and we're gonna just uh create a community that's not only crypto but more just uh like-minded people with with plans to kind of better themselves and changing to, to change the world really so that's the whole that's the whole plan so thank you so much for coming up here and if any of the other guys want to come up and chat feel free uh digs are principled 
What's up, yeah. fellas? How you doing? You go. Go, Diggs. Hey, man, this is a great topic. I love it. Um, it's interesting because a lot of you, what your discussion, your thoughts has been exactly what I've been thinking coming into 2023. I don't know. Uh, the Vegas meetup, when I came home, I was like, you know what? I need to prepare. Um, I need to prepare my body. I need to prepare my mind. I need to prepare uh, where I'm going. Um, you know, there's just been a, it's been a lot of thoughts in my head and now it's time to bring them to fruition. Um, so I started, you know, working on my body. I've lost some weight, still working on some more, uh, eating appropriately, watching what I eat because exactly what Zen you're saying about, you know, we don't have the proper nutrition in our food anymore. So we have to supplement it different ways. Uh, Melzi, same thing. You know, the, we've got a lot of parasites in our body that we need to take out to clean them out. Um, you know, there's just a lot of work to do in our bodies. And I'm doing that because, you know, our bodies is all we got. So we have to take care of them so our minds can be strong and we can achieve what we want to achieve. Um, I love the, the, the great points that Melzi brought up about, about not really, uh, about, you know, grinding it out and, and work being a grind and changing the, the attitude of it, uh, making it uh, into a positive instead of a negative. Um, something I've, I've realized these last couple of years, really about, you know, all the different Riddlers out there and, and all the things going on and um, different just different information that coming out, I, I realize that words are powerful and words have lots of meanings. And those words have been used to control people for an eternity. Um, so I've really, I've really made a conscious effort to change the words that I use, the words that go through my mind and make, um, you know, Turn positives into negatives and, and making the changes. Because, you know, one thing I've, uh, I've learned is that, you know, if you need to make a change, you can make a change in a split second. I mean, you know, it changes hard. Sometimes it's hard for some people more than others. But really, you can change in less than a second. It's just like just a lightning beat. And you can say, you know what? Boom, I'm going to do this. And you just do it. Um, I think if you take too long thinking about it and you're, you're procrastinating about it, chances are it's, it's not going to happen. But if you just decide, you know what, boom, I'm going to do this and you just start going after it, chances are you're going to get, you know, where you need to go. So I, I love everything you guys have been saying. You guys have been right on, uh, me personally, I like, I like thinking about the wheel life you know, where you have the different spokes of the different parts of your life, no matter, you know, how many spokes you have. And when you pull too far from, from one spoke, you're taken away from somewhere else. And so having that balance in your life is very important. I think for me personally, it keeps me happy. It keeps me balanced. It keeps me um, honest. And um, that's something that I, I personally work on all the time is just, that wheel of life. So I just enjoyed everything you guys have been talking about. Awesome, man. Thanks for sharing. I, I, I also, again, agree with everything you, you've said. And yeah, like you said, that the attitude, like you're going to have to put in the work. You're going to have to do these things anyways. You, you, you're just going to have to choose, like, are you going to do it with a positive attitude and get what you want? And are you going to do it with confidence and and really believe in yourself and, and achieve everything you can achieve, or are you just going to let it pass you by and have a year of, of regret, you know? So like, I'm, I'm glad everybody is relating and um, yeah, this, this space has been fun and it's awesome that, that people are coming up and, and sharing their thoughts. And uh, yeah, this is kind of why we did it. I think it's, I think this has been uh, great. And I think uh, we're going to build something good with this. Just doing, doing this once, once in a while will be, will be great. Principal, I think. Did you want to come up? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Marisha. Um, following on from Melzi and Diggs, that was awesome. I I'll start with basically a quick rundown of why. Um, <clears throat> I'm a real family man and watching 
um, the lives of youth through sport. Um, I was probably a semi-professional football athlete myself, or we call it rugby league, but and that's just been my passion. And um, I use my work um, as leverage to to give to the community, and that's why I'm in this. That's why I'm trying to improve myself in crypto, so that I can do more and more and do it for basically do it for free down the track. That's my ultimate goal. Um, because I think to tap into what you were saying before, guys, too many kids get a ceiling put on them at a very young age and get told all the things they can't do and they can't be. And, you know, um, and even, you know, like, you know, be aggressive and confident in the right context. Um, and it can take you, you know, it can set you up for life, a mindset for life anyway. Um, what can my, my uh, immediate term financial goal that I want to be held accountable to through you guys, um, which I, I love this, is um, I want to um, knock $250,000 off my loan, home loan. And I want to do that by the end of the year. So that's going to be probably crypto is going to be a, a large portion of that. Um, so I need to sharpen the saw and keep myself fresh and sharp to, to identify opportunities to sell and take profits when that when that arises so the behavioral goals that that i've kind of want to commit to um one of one of them's a little bit embarrassing but i'm going to go there um and i'll get that to that one in a sec but um the first is just I'm, i've always been very healthy in that but i've found myself in the last six months taking pleasure in chocolate or i've got to cut that shit out man like if i because i've got like, so I've got a lot of people that always tell me, oh, Couchy, I, I don't know how you do it. You do, you know, how you find the energy to do so much and whatever. That's that's great, you know, and I do push on. But imagine how much easier, to, to Melzi's point, it would be if I wasn't feeling myself, you know, sporadically with this junk, you know, um, that's that's front and centre on all the supermarket shelves and service stations. When you get petrol, it's it's, it's right there in front of you. So I've got to you know, um, put that a shit aside. Um, the second, the second one is, yeah, like, uh, what do you guys call it? Zen fapping? <laughs> oh, shit. Can yeah. You, uh, uh, yeah. you want that, man? Yeah, I think you said it weakens the legs. Fapping, no, yeah, no. yeah. I know yeah, no, nah, but you know, it's all like I, I won't say I'll do it on a daily basis, but it's it's yeah, I, it's, I'm gonna leave it there. But I, I do, I, I something it's it's um, you know, I've read, I've read all about this the all the transmutation and the keeping yourself sharp and all that kind of stuff. And what a legend! I miss Australia yeah. just from just from hearing you, man. I used to live in Melbourne, and I love Australians, they're hilarious. Yeah, oh, and cool, just, yeah. Well, we got so the whole East Coast covered. Uh, okay, so I'm I'm down in Thoreau and that uh, which is just uh, near Wollongong, an hour south of Sydney. Uh dope, dope. Okay, so no chocolate, no fapping, and you're yeah, and fifty k. Yeah, and one more thing, I live like 150, 200 meters from one of the nicest beaches in um in in New South Wales or in Australia, and I, and I. I, I want to commit to getting in the water every single day. Um, yeah, for those like to touching on the Wim Hof type benefits. And... Amazing. That, that's, that's actually, that's a privilege. That's a privilege to me. But yeah, that, that's sick. Um, well, make sure you write them down. And if you want, uh, I, I don't know if you've read Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, but it's got like the six step method to kind of... Uh, write these goals down. We kind of went over it earlier, but yeah, just check out that book and then you can really uh, break it down for you and, and then, yeah, write them down and I'm sure you can you can smash all of them. Yeah. The fapping one. That one's not, <laughs> you don't want to smash that one. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I've got the book. I've read it and um, I will I will touch touch back, circle back to that book and, um, uh, yeah, and, and take that, follow those processes. And yeah, I'll smash all those goals out of the park except the one you mentioned. Yes. 
All right, thanks for coming up, dude. And yeah, let's let's, let's make that um that room in the chat lounge so we can all keep keep up to date. Uh, if anyone else wants to come up, blockchain monkeys, what's up, dude? Uh, anyone wants to come up, feel free. If not, we can maybe wrap it up in a little bit. What do you think, Zen? Uh, yeah. Anyone else want to uh, come up here and share their basically goals if they want to be held ac- accountable? Yeah. If if not, we can we can wrap it up with uh, with with a last quote um, from Albert Einstein. Everything is energy, and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want. And you cannot help but get that reality. So I guess we can wrap it up with that. And no fap, no fapping. And I guess that's uh, until until next month. Let's keep in touch and let's start that Zen Lounge chat. Yeah, guys, everybody, thanks. I'm going to upload this video. I'm going to upload this video to my YouTube page. So if anyone wants to rewatch this and listen to some of the points that we made, uh, it's going to be uploaded to my YouTube page. Uh, you guys could join the Zen Lounge. We'd love to see you guys become members. And uh, yeah, let's make this the best 2023 yet. Now that we have an amazing community that is all on the same page that likes to talk about this subject, uh, we could do so much more. And I think more and more people are going to be more and more cozy coming up here and sharing their information and their stories as we keep doing this. So i uh, see you guys next month. Uh, give me some feedback and have an awesome new year. Peace. All right, peace out.